Hey Zen Sauce, Steven here. In this video, I want to talk about my favorite hashtag mega fave number, which is technically known as the BB Beef Bag Cell Del Dino Egg Food Gin High Hell Him In No Comma. So how big is this number? I'll just scroll it on by so you can check it out. That number seems giant, right? Well, it's actually not. It's really only equal to about 454.539. That's because it's secretly a fraction. See? So, why is this fraction special? Well, I used it in a microtonal album. This album sarcastically parodies Zen Harmonic Big Brain Electronica. It crashes iTunes. The track and album titles are all emojis, and the track notes are 1,080 pages long. Without rambling on about the album too much, I'll say it's extremely mathematically adventurous and mischievous, both with rhythm and with pitch. Listen to it if you like detail, fresh feelings, EDM, contemporary classical, excitement, and bass. Link is in the description. To start talking about what this crazy fraction is used for, we first have to talk about tuning systems. When you go to music school in the US, the way they teach you to conceptualize pitch is with the piano. Now, the piano has 12 equally spaced pitches per octave. This means that you can start on one note, proceed up by the same pitch height 12 times, and get to an octave. The reason there are 12 notes is a mixture of historical conventions and practical compromise between intervals, and there are plenty of videos about this. Usually when someone is making microtonal music, they are questioning this assumption of having 12 equally spaced notes, or 12 tone equal temperament. What if you had 13 notes? 14? 15? 100? You can have any number your computer can handle, even non-integers. Woohoo! Yes! The notes don't even have to be equally spaced. For example, what if you had 12 notes in one octave, but the distance between adjacent notes didn't necessarily have the same pitch height? If you're making music, I highly recommend exploring tuning systems that are unfamiliar to you to see what you can learn musically. It's powerful and guaranteed, guaranteed, to change your musical life. So the way we get to our giant number here is about breaking the temperament finder. So this means we have to talk about the idea of temperament. Oh boy. This is extremely hard to explain in a short amount of time, but I think I can do it, so just bear with me. So let's talk about ratios and sense for a second. These are ways to represent microtonal pitches as mathematical values, and both can either refer to a distance between two pitches, which is called an interval, or a pitch itself, which you can just call a pitch. If you wanted to put all of your pitches in the same octave while examining the scale, you could call it pitch class. Scents are easier to intuit because they just explain pitch height. There are 1,200 scents in one octave, so that means that each standard piano semitone is 100 cents. 100 cent semitones times 12 equally spaced notes per octave equals 1,200 cents in the octave. Each cent value has a corresponding ratio, and vice versa. Now, tuning systems that only use whole number ratios are known as just intonation, which is often contrasted with the method we mentioned earlier, equal temperament. Now, whole number ratios are extremely special. In antiquity, they referred to string lengths, but they also refer to the ratio of the frequencies themselves. Like, if your initial pitch in a tuning system is 100 hertz, and you go up an octave, the 2 to 1 ratio, you'll get 200 hertz. You can multiply any frequency by an interval ratio, and the frequency will go up by the interval that that ratio represents. Here are some other examples of ratios. 3 over 2, a just perfect fifth. 5 over 4, a just major third. 6 over 5, a just minor third. You can also multiply ratios by each other to form chains of intervals. So for example, Let's get to a perfect fifth two different ways. In one way, we could just multiply our frequency by 3 over 2. Or, we could traverse that distance by going up a just major third, 5 over 4, and then a just minor third, 6 over 5. Wowee! 
if you wanted to hear the difference between just intonation and equal temperament, that's also been done to death on YouTube, so I won't do it again in this video. Now here's where temperament comes in, so buckle up. When you have a simple chain of intervals that extends to a particular pitch, it's often very, very close to another simple chain of intervals extension to a slightly different pitch. Let's call this small difference between pitches formed from chains of intervals a comma. For example, in mean tone temperament, which was used for centuries in Western music, tuning systems were eliminating the comma between 81 over 64 and 5 over 4, which is a small ratio distance of 81 over 80. In diatonic interval language, you can say that this now means that four perfect fifths, down two octaves, are equal to a major third. Four perfect fifths equaling a major third is something that's true in 12 tone equal temperament, but not in just intonation. But this only works in certain equal temperaments. Which equal temperaments, though? Well, this is where the temperament finder comes in. The finder is a really great tool for figuring out which tuning systems can cause a given comma to vanish. Tuning systems that accomplish this also don't have to be in equal temperament or just intonation. They can be unequal, non-just scales, which may be known as middle paths and or regular temperaments. So what kinds of other commas are there? Well, commas are generally supposed to be small and they pop up everywhere. For example, there are lots of commas in Paul Ehrlich's Middle Path paper, which use prime numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7. And these are as commonly used as something can be in microtonality. Temperament systems have lots of different ways that they can be optimized so that they sound as much like their just intonation counterparts as possible. Some of the temperaments don't even sound audibly different from just intonation. The pattern here, though not necessarily always true, tends to be that commas that are very, very small in actual pitch height or scent size will have lots and lots and lots of numbers written in their whole number ratios. Check out Mercator's comma here. This is what happens if we keep going with 53 perfect fifths until we get really, really close to an octave again. There are lots and lots of numbers written here, but the comma is only a small, tiny, tiny, sub-cent amount of cents wide. And these commas here on Joe Monza's website, I mean, holy moly, there's so many numbers in this ratio that it has to be written in scientific notation. And the cent size is absolutely minuscule. So you get the idea. Commas that have smaller cent values lead to more efficient temperaments because they sound more like just intonation. But they are also more mathematically dense. Now, this leads me to my idea. In the album I made, I was interested in testing the limits of things and using giant or nonsensical numbers just for the sake of it. And that includes the temperament finder. So the questions I was asking were, how have people used temperament in the past? How complex can a temperament get? How big can the numbers get? How can I break the temperament finder? Etc. I should mention at this point that I couldn't have done this without Paul Ehrlich. He not only knows regular temperament theory inside and out, but was willing to collaborate with me on this absolute silliness. To create a regular temperament, you need intervals that you can chain over and over to get any of the notes in that tuning. These are known as generators. For example, in mean tone temperament, there are two generators, both of which are tempered, the perfect fifth and octave. The number of generators tells you the rank of the tuning, so mean tone, which results in a diatonic scale after seven pitches, is rank two. Sometimes people get into higher rank temperaments, generally in just intonation, but this is uncommon because more regularity is so helpful musically. So, how do I make this as absurd and needlessly complex as possible for the album aesthetic and decor? My strategy was to not only make the rank as high as I could, but also have a high amount of prime numbers used in the commas frequency ratio. You see, each unique prime number represents a dimension or rank in our tuning system, so with many prime numbers, we would have a really high rank. Using primes 2 and 3, you get Pythagorean tuning, which is rank 2, or two-dimensional. Using 2, 3, and 5, you get 5 limit just intonation, which is rank 3, or three-dimensional. Using 2, 3, 5, and 7, you get 7 limit just intonation, which is rank 4, or four-dimensional, etc. So I used the highest prime number system allowed in the temperament finder. All of the primes from 2 to 53. 
This system, 53 limit just intonation, has 16 primes in it, and we tempered out this one incredibly absurd comma, giving us a rank 15 tuning system, or one with 15 unique generating intervals, or 15 dimensions. So complex and crazy. If you have a rank N tuning system and temper out a comma, you get a rank N minus 1 tuning system. Hence, why this goes down to rank 15 from 16 after I temper our crazy comma out. So, with all this information in mind, what do you think this number is? That's right, it's the ratio of our absolutely absurd comma. But contrary to what I told you earlier about ratio length versus actual pitch height and sense, this comma not only has a lot of numbers written in its ratio, but it is also giant! It's 10,593.9 cents wide, which adds up to about 8 octaves and a minor 7th. It's so wide that you couldn't play it on the piano if it was rounded to 12 tone equal temperament. This was all Paul. We were coming up with different ways to find absurdly long commas, and we found some that were longer when written out, but that I couldn't really copy into documents because of their length, or it would be imperfect in some other way. The strategy that Paul settled on, which is absolutely brilliant, was using crossbreeding. This involves an opposite process from causing a comma to vanish. While tempering out vanishing commas decrease the dimensionality of the system, eventually getting to one-dimensional equal temperament, crossbreeding starts from equal temperament and increases the dimensionality by looking at which approximations they share in common. From there, it was a process of trial and error to see which commas could be completely absurd. Paul used something called warts, attached to the equal temperaments in order to accomplish this. Warts are letters that specify nth best approximations to prime numbered frequency ratios. Our method of trial and error was this. First, we tried crossbreeding extremely large equal tunings in the 99,990-ish range. This mostly gave commas that were too tiny to register in my sig digs, although they could often be written as extremely long strings of digits, sometimes too long, as I mentioned before. I needed an excessive number of digits, but not more than 96,000 of them. Next, we tried crossbreeding smaller equal tunings, uh, like in the 80 to 99 ranges. This gave commas that were a noticeable size. And then, with the addition of the warts to these sorts of equal tunings, we finally got a comma that had an extremely long number of digits, but was also a big size. Uh, but so big that it blew away my expectations. I had no idea that this comma we found was going to be this big. I was expecting something average-sized, but not out of the piano's playing range. The warts attached to the equal temperaments create a specific approximation that makes it harder to come up with commas that are small and simple. If you put in equal temperaments without warts, the program creates its own warts for you, which leads to more results and simpler commas. In a sense, we were asking the program to do the opposite of what's intended. Instead of creating a very simple comma, or the simplest comma possible from a set of circumstances, we were saying, create the craziest comma possible! You can see up here that Paul simply used different words to keep track of the warts. B, 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 beg, sell, del, dino, egg, food, gin, high, hill, him, in, and no. That's why I call this the B, 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 beg, sell, del, dino, egg, food, gin, high, hill, him, in, no, comma. So now you're probably wondering, gee, Stephen, how did you actually use this in music? How would anyone ever hear this tempered out? Well, they don't have to in order to use the temperament system. Here's what I did. Remember how I talked about generators earlier? Like mean tone temperament has two generators, which can be a tempered perfect fifth and octave, etc. Well, in the temperament finder, there will be a series of generators listed near the bottom that support the temperament and its vanished comma or set of commas. So I was able to plug these generators into Max MSP to generate random ostinatos. You'll get to hear the music at the end of the video. It should be noted that I don't use this temperament to pump the comma at all. I just wanted the number to be crazy, and that's exactly what I got. This comma caused discussion on the tuning Facebook threads, where key individuals had some really helpful contributions. Steve Martin created a set of generators that were much more reasonably sized than the ones that are given by default in the temperament finder. He did this using a program called Perry. There are multiple different ways to write generators of a given temperament that can still work. For example, you could write mean tone temperaments to generators as a perfect fifth and octave, or a major second and minor second. Similarly, this was simply a different way to write the 15 generators such that any of the same notes could be reached. The method used was called TLLL mapping. James Kukula 
actually use decode to create an hour-long stream of melodic content that pumps the comma. He did it in several iterations, somehow being efficient with the tempered higher primes? Uh, I do know that if you're creating a comma pump, you can visualize that by drawing a line from the original pitch to your comma, and then using pitches along the way of the line. I can't imagine that in 15-dimensional space, though. Ha! <laughs> Amazing stuff. I was very happy to have inspired such thinking. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and the impetus for me using this giant number. To close, here's footage of how you would get this number yourself on the Temperament Finder. Hey, number file, do you guys notice me now? Anyway, I also have a Patreon account, so you can pitch into that if you want to see some more stellar microtonal content. Thanks, all. See you later. Seven. Thirteen. Fifteen. Six. 